What's that? You want some culinary puns? Well, have I got the review for you. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my coverage of the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival, today I'm going to be talking about the 2022 dark comedy thriller, The Menu, which will be released in theaters on November 18th. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some trailer film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Menu stars Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt, and Ray Fiennes, and was directed by Mark Mylod. It tells the story of a couple, Margot and Tyler, who travel to an island to eat at an exclusive restaurant, only to find that they may have bitten off more than they can chew. Some people can just go to a restaurant, look at the menu for a minute or two, and order something. Other people have a harder time choosing under the pressuring gaze of the waiter, and end up panic ordering something that they don't necessarily even want. I have a tendency to fall into that second category, but one way to avoid the panic order is to plan ahead. To look up the menu online and decide what you're going to order before you even head to the restaurant. And decide on a backup just in case they're out of what you want. Planning for a film festival is kind of similar. Some people can just show up and decide what they want to see based on their cinematic cravings at the moment, whereas others meticulously plan out every film and every hour of their time at the festival. I bet you can guess which category I fall into for that. While browsing the TIFF menu ahead of the festival, I came across a particularly scrumptious sounding film that I was especially excited to check out. Turns out that this cinematic dish was even better than it sounded on the menu. The menu is a very interesting concoction. A blend of ingredients that don't sound like they necessarily work together, but end up complementing one another in a surprisingly satisfying way. There are culinary and foodie elements that'll make your mouth water, and a zest of mystery to make the flavors pop, but really, this is a perfectly executed emulsion that combines satirical dark comedy and thriller. It definitely has its shocking moments that could be described as horror garnish, but it's not really a horror movie, as some of the advertising has indicated. Just biting social satire that gets very dark at times, but remains quite funny throughout. The satire here is not unlike that of some other popular films we've seen in recent years. It's not even all that unlike another movie that was a tiff this year. It tackles class differences with a familiar eat-the-rich mentality, but frames it all through a culinary lens. It more than lightly jabs at food culture and the restaurant industry as a whole, but its condemnation of pretentiousness, snobbery, and entitlement can be broadly applied to anything. Even criticism itself can't escape unscathed, with a food critic character repeatedly crafting increasingly grandiloquent descriptions of the meal's courses, something that made me, a film critic sitting in the theater, notebook in hand, chuckle a little bit. This is not a subtle film by any means, but its spotlight on the idea of experience versus mere consumption is fittingly appropriate. The Menu is a film that takes place over the course of a single dinner, mostly in one location, a dining room with an adjacent open kitchen. Single location, single day films can sometimes be a bit of a challenge and don't always work, but the screenplay here is crafted remarkably well and most definitely ensures that this film works. It starts off with a mysterious air as the island and players are introduced, but there's also an immediate sense of uneasiness, a lingering feeling that something unsavory is going on. Much like the dinner at the heart of the story, this film is a full-course meal, building on itself and gradually coming together over the course of the night. It's a stylishly plated affair, with each of the meal's courses receiving entertainingly informative intertitles, and also revealing another piece of the plan. It's subtle at first. You won't even realize it's happening during the first course or two, but it definitely becomes much more obvious as the meal progresses, continuously building tension with the story, editing, and even sound design. I'm always a little hesitant of films with big ensemble casts. The more characters you introduce to the story, the less time and focus can be devoted to each of them. Oftentimes, this can result in underdeveloped caricatures rather than meaningful characters. 
But in a satire, sometimes that's actually ideal. We have our main three characters who receive a bit more focus, but the remainder of the dinner guests are intentionally one note, lampooning their very stereotypical qualities. Hong Chao's Elsa gets a bit more characterization than the other workers on the island, and is responsible for some of the film's funniest lines. We've also got Nicholas Holt as the pretentious Instagram foodie chef superfan, believably tapping and snapping away. He's perfectly unlikable, which makes it all the more easy to empathize with Anya Taylor-Joy's Margot, the outlier on the guest list. And then, of course, we've got Rafe Fiennes, who gives a commanding and captivating performance as chef. The Menu is a dark film, but it's also an exceptionally fun one. Honestly, it was one of the best times I had in the theater at TIFF this year, and surpassed even my pre-dinner menu browsing expectations. It's a film that will simultaneously make you hungry and put you off your appetite, make you laugh and shock you, and of course, entertain and satiate you. This is one meal you won't be sending back to the kitchen. In fact, you'll probably find yourself asking for seconds. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is the screenplay. This is a wonderfully crafted film. The story is engaging and twisty enough to stay interesting, but never so much as to annoy. Its satire is very blunt, but the dark comedy is wonderfully funny, both with its situational humor as well as its witty, playful dialogue. And the structure of this film, set up to mirror the core structure of the meal, is a delightfully creative approach to telling this story. The second pro is the style. I realize this is kind of vague, but it incorporates a lot of things. Technical elements like the cinematography and sound design, which help to create this very modern look and feel to the film, but also the momentum behind the story. The quick pace and the snappy editing that keeps things moving forward. The coarse intertitles, which get progressively more tongue-in-cheek as the film goes along, are also incredibly fun and fitting for this film. Really, the whole movie is just dark and fun, which suits the story perfectly. Pro number three is the ensemble cast. This isn't something I tend to put in the pros very often, because I think it's difficult to divide story focus among too many characters, but it actually works here. The dinner guests all have their unique qualities that the film makes sure to dig into, but they're also a cohesive whole, a bunch of entitled jerks that just so happen to be dining together. Even the three focal characters are fantastic. Holt's obnoxious and very punchable Tyler, Taylor Joy's mysterious and resilient Margot, and Fine's intense and cryptic chef. On the con side, my only issues are really just minor nitpicks. Honestly, I had a wholly fun time with this one, but as I said during the review, this movie is not subtle with its themes and intended messages. It's very playful with these ideas, and can come across a bit smug at times, which may put some people off. I think this con is a bit like cilantro. Some people will appreciate the depth it brings to the dish's flavor, while others will find it tastes a bit soapy and ruins the whole dish. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying the menu or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy in one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give the menu four and a half out of five paws. This is a deliciously entertaining film, an emulsion of satirical dark comedy and thriller paired with a delectable ensemble cast. The stylish plating and biting social commentary are sure to satisfy even the most discerning palate. I would recommend The Menu to fans of dark comedies and social satires. This is certainly not a subtle film in its criticisms, but it is a very entertaining one. It's been advertised as a horror film, and while it's got some horrific moments, if you come in expecting a true horror, you'll probably be let down a bit. It's definitely more a satire with strong thriller elements instead. Also, fans of food, and especially foodies who can laugh at themselves a bit, will likely enjoy big bites of this one. If you liked the menu, I would recommend Triangle of Sadness. This was another film that showed at TIFF this year, and it too is a dark satirical comedy that tackles themes of class difference. It also features a very memorable dining room scene that's admittedly memorable for very different reasons than the menu. 
If you want another food-based thriller with strong social themes, you might want to check out The Platform, which also premiered at TIFF, though back in 2019. And if you still haven't gotten your fill of dinner-centric thrillers, you should watch The Feast, which is a psychological slow burn that focuses on a wealthy family's dinner party and their mysterious server. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen the menu? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite movie about a chef? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.